thank you very much. Yes, um, I'm Claire <coughs> in Edinburgh. I'm going to be very fast and skipping through very quickly, so lots of pictures. Hopefully it all makes sense. So quick overview, we have um, two projects in the digital humanities area. One is called Trading Consequences, which is history, um, data, and one is a current one, which is still ongoing, called Palimpsest, which is um, concerned with literature. So by text mining in these contexts, what, what we mean is um, our system, which does XML-based document analysis, and it does similar things to Sophia's last picture of adding annotation layers to a document, starting with the initial conversion of the format, and then adding layers, doing tokenization, sentence splitting, part of speech tagging, lemmatization, named entity recognition, uh, relation extraction, and in our case, uh, shallow parsing, not full pound parsing. And then in addition to those layers of annotations, actually trying to get some semantics in, and so grounding some of the entities to resources, for example, grounding places to external gazetteers to say what their coordinates are. Um, Geoparsing, uh, in that is a, just really a, a sub-kind of text mining in, in this sense. So geoparsing is just text mining with a particular emphasis on place. So good rules for doing recognition of place names in texts, and then uh, very flexible methods for doing geo-resolution of a variety of different kinds of texts. So quickly, uh, Trading Consequences is a project that's now finished. It was a digging into data project, and this is a quick slide showing all the partners. So we had historians at York University in Canada, um, us in informatics doing the text mining, people at St Andrews doing visualisation of the data, and Edina doing uh, database management for us. And the aim of Trading Consequences was to enable historians to ask questions about um, global commodity tra trading during the 19th century. So we were looking at a variety of historical sources and they were trying to trace the commodities moving across the globe. Um, so our data that we use for trading consequences, these are the collections we used, and you can see that they are really quite sizable. Uh, the biggest one was the House of Commons <coughs> parliamentary paper. Um, we also had uh, early Canadiana online and a variety of other different sources. Um, okay, so what we were trying to do was find um, various entities and relations between them. So the main, the main entity in our case was a commodity, um, a, a, a material that could be transported. So um, this example has cassia bark, so we find that as a commodity and then we ground that to an ontology of commodities that we developed. And we want to know dates and we want to know places and other information. Uh, so we grounded Padang to its lat longs and America to lat longs. And then having found the entities, the next stage is relation extraction to, to, to relate entities one to another to say that Cassia Bark is related to pa Padang and that Padang's the origin, it's related to America and that, Cassi and, and that America is the destination. Um, okay, so we had a number of, and we built a database of all these relations, basically a huge database full of possible relations. So one of the issues that we had was um, bad OCR because all of our data was um, OCR'd at various times in the past and some of it not very well. So this is just a very good slide showing you some of the, some of the bad quality. I don't actually even know which collection this comes from, but there was variable quality across collections. Um, here's another thing. This is a variety of different ways that we found Montreal in, in our collection. So given the place is a very important thing, then you can see that this causes some problems. Um, the end product of the uh, project was uh, very nice visualizations where you could explore um, the information that we had extracted into the database, but I'll just leave you with that picture there. Okay, the second project, Palimpsest, an Edinburgh literary cityscape, is funded by AHRC, it's ongoing, and our partners um, in this case uh, are essentially the same people, but instead of historians from Canada, we now have literature people from Edinburgh, and uh, the project is completely revolves around Edinburgh. We're looking at literature that mentions Edinburgh and trying to extract the parts of the literature with the, with the, with the Edinburgh place name mentions and trying to find interesting ones from the literary point of view, um, but also possibly from the tourism point of view. Uh, yes, so here are our partners, Literature Department, us, <coughs> St Andrews and Edina again. So we're looking for literary works that are at least partly set in Edinburgh, and we want to find a way of actually determining whether or not a book is about Edinburgh, so whether it's loco-specific. 
Um, we also need a fine-grained location gazette for Edinburgh for the small place names, whether they're buildings or streets or monuments or whatever. Um, and then we want to extract snippets and visualise them on the web or a mobile device and rank the snippets for interestingness. Our data sets here were, um, the biggest one is uh, the Hathi Trust, everything that was openly available from Hathi Trust. But we also have a collection from the British Library, the 19th century books. We have some books from Gutenberg, Oxford Text Archive, etc. And we have a very limited set of uh, copyrighted material with the permission of the <coughs> authors or the publishers. Um, so to find an Edinburgh-centric book, we had to basically take big collections and then shrink them down to the books that actually have something about Edinburgh in them. So for example, for the Hathi Trust, which was our biggest collection, we had somewhere in the region of 240,000 initial books. And we did some um, automatic ranking to look for um, Edinburgh relevant terms and managed to reduce that set down quite considerably. And then we have, a, we have, a, um, we have the literature people do some manual curation, curation on those to actually confirm or discard those potential Edinburgh books. Um, so at the moment, we've got 385 books from Hathi um, from the British Library collection, we've got, oh, sorry, I must have an error there. Um, we have fewer than 546. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how many. Um, from Gutenberg, we have 175 and so on. So we're taking a very big collection and shrinking it down to the ones that we want. Um, these are the, I don't know, is that visible? These are the titles um, of some of the ones that have been deemed to be Edinburgh-centric from the British Library collection. Um, and here's a very quick <coughs> visualisation of um, a tiny bit of Stevenson's picturesque notes where you can see that we found the place names and located them on a map. Okay. So, uh, so I went through very quickly. I don't know how much time I have left. Uh, got about two minutes. Okay. So um, these are just some, some of the conclusions that I, I have made from doing these two projects. Um, one is that, um, in our experience, that um, text mining tools have to be adapted in each case. That um, we start with a with a fairly robust set of tools, but in each project you, they have to be um, adapted and changed according to the needs of the project. And because of that, collaboration between the people who actually need the the information and the people doing the text mining is very important. And um, depending on the situation, it's possible that instead of just doing fully automatic text mining, that you might want to do assisted curation where the text mining makes the first pass and the best guess, and then the, the, um, the expert actually interacts with the text mining output. Um, another conclusion, OCR quality is a constant issue and problem, and I wish that somebody would go and read OCR <laughs> every, everything, every document we've ever had. Um, but still, and um, a more re something that I've thought about more recently is that document structure is um, important, and we've never really quite got a handle on it. But from the books that we have in Palimpsest, it's clear that um, they're they're very diverse, and we haven't segmented them into their actual structure. So if we have a book of short stories, we might have one short story that's got something very interesting about Edinburgh in it, but we haven't got a way of actually reliably segmenting that book into parts so that we can ignore the bits we're not interested in. And we don't really actually have a reliable way of dealing with uh, running headers, running footers, front matter, back matter, um, just joining pages across page breaks and so on. So, so these are things that um, I wish we could do better. And that's me.